Okay, guys, we're going to go over series circuits and parallel circuits right now. So first, I want to talk to you guys about a series circuit. In a series circuit, a couple of things are true. One, there is only one path for current to flow. Okay, That's why um, it's often... That's why the current is the same everywhere in the circuit. Okay. And two, the voltage is divided among the resistors. Okay. These facts will help us solve out our circuit and are important to remember. Okay. So first, let's go ahead and do the things we know. The total voltage is 9.0 volts, okay? The voltage comes from the battery, okay? In a series circuit, the total resistance equals the sum of all of the other resistors in the circuit, okay? They all add up because the current has to flow through all of them. So in this case, we have 100 ohms plus 300 ohms plus 50 ohms. Okay, you add it all together and you get 450 ohms. Okay, so that is our total resistance in the circuit. Okay, and we can use that to solve for, I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. To solve for the total current. Okay. In order to solve for the total current, we use the total resistance and the total voltage. And the equation V equals IR. Okay. If you reorganize that, you can get I equals voltage divided by resistance. Um, you can use this anywhere in a circuit. It works everywhere. And a little shortcut for it, if you like these types of shortcuts, is to do the triangle, okay, where voltage goes on top, I goes there, and R goes there, okay. So that's something you can remember, and this works in every circuit, every time. Okay, so in our situation right here, our total current is going to equal 9.0 volts, divided by 450 ohms. You plug that into your calculator. And you get 0 0.02 amps. Okay, so that is our current. Okay. I'm just going to erase everything so I have room for the next step. Because it is a series circuit, that means right here the current is 0 0.02 amps. That also means that right here the current is 0 0.2 amps. Right here it's the same number. Here it's the same. Here it's the same. Here it's the same. Get where I'm going with this? Everywhere in the circuit is receiving a current of 0.2 amps. So now we just need to solve through for the voltage through each resistor. If you guys remember from the lab, okay, higher resistance means higher voltage. Okay, and that makes sense because if we look at the equation, V equals IR, if R goes up, V must go up as as well since the current is constant. Okay, so we can go ahead and test this out. V1 is going to be equal to I, the current through 1, which is 0 0.02 amps, times the resistance 1, 100. Okay, we solve that out and we get 2 volts. Okay, this one is going to be the current, which is 0.2 amps, 
times 450, which gives us 9 volts. And then, wait, 300. I don't know where I got 450 for. I apologize. I was like, something doesn't look right. Six volts. Okay. And the last one. Is one volt. Okay. So there's all our voltages. And if you ever wanted to check those and make sure they're correct, the voltages should add up to the total voltage. So if we add all those up, we get 9 volts, which, what do you know, is the voltage of the battery. It splits off, everything holds true, we are good to go. Okay. So that's how series circuits work. Parallel circuits are a little bit more complicated, but a lot more useful. So let's look at this parallel circuit. A couple notes to remember about parallel circuit is that in a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same across all resistors. Okay? This is because the voltage is like the energy that the resistor carries. So the resistor here, okay, the current coming from this battery only sees that resistor. Okay? The current over here, it only sees that resistor. No current, it's not going to like zigzag through here and see all of the resistors. It's just going to take one of the paths around the circuit. Okay? So the voltage is the same across all resistors. This means that the current coming out of the battery, or the total current, gets divided up among the different paths. Okay? And we'll see how that works in a sec. So remember these things when we move on. Okay. So first, let's go ahead and do the stuff that we know right off the bat. The voltage of the battery is 9 volts. Okay, That means that the voltage here is 9 volts, the voltage here is 9 volts, and the voltage there is 9 volts. Okay, It doesn't get split up. The voltage is the same because it's the current that it carries. Okay, Let's go ahead and fill in our resistors in the table just to make it easier. We got 90 ohms. 45 ohms, and 180 ohms. Okay. In this one, the total resistance doesn't add up. Okay. Instead, it's a different equation. It's 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. The total resistance will always end up being less than the resistances of each of the individual resistors. Okay? You can think of it like a toll booth. Okay? If you have more options of which path to take, of which toll booth or which resistor to go through, you're going to go through faster because not everything has to go through one resistor. Instead, some can go there, some can go there and some can go there. Okay? So that's why the total resistance ends up being lower. Let's go ahead and solve for it using that equation. We have 1 over R total equals 1 over 90 plus 1 over, that's not right at all, plus 1 over 45 plus 1 over 180. Okay? So we plug it into our calculator. 1 over 90 plus 1 over 45 
plus 1 over 180, and we get that 1 over r total equals 0 0.038 on and on and on. Okay, so when we do some algebra and rearrange it, we get r total equals 1 over 0 0.038. So when we do that, we get that r total is 25.7 ohms. Okay, and that makes sense. It should be less than the lowest resistor. Okay. So to get the currents now, we go back to our good old friend V equals IR. We're solving for current this time, so it's going to be voltage divided by resistance. So for I1, we have 9 divided by 90. For this one, we have 9 divided by 45. For this one, we have 9 divided by 180. You plug those into your calculator. Yes, I needed to plug that into my calculator. Attention access. This is your friendly reminder. Please make sure you pick up all your trash and all your trash around you. You don't want to jeopardize your nutrition break. Okay, we can also use this for I total. We can do I total equals 9 divided by the total resistance, 25.7. Okay, and we get a value of 0 0.35. Okay, so we've solved everything in the circuit. I'm going to show you guys a couple little hints and tricks that will help you check this, show you other ways you could have solved this, anything like that. Okay. One, in a series circuit, the total current equals the sum of all of the other currents. Okay. And we can check that. I total equals 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.05. What do you know? It's still 0 0.35 amps. Okay, that's going to be the same no matter what. It doesn't matter which way you solve it. If you use V equals IR or this, we could have done the current first and then used V equals IR to solve for the total resistance. Okay, we can check that. 9 volts equals 0 0.03 or 0 0.35 times 25.7. Okay, check and make sure that that is true. Yep, it's true. Okay. So we are good to go. That is how parallel circuits work. Okay. Now sometimes we'll run into combination circuits. Okay, combination circuits work like this. Okay, whenever you do it, Say we're solving for the um, total resistance. Okay, we always start out with the parallel ones. Okay, and we figure out what their equivalent resistance is. So let me just pull that little section out for you. Okay, so this is twelve and this is six. To find our total for that, it's one over our total equals one over twelve plus 1 over 6. That gives me um, hold on, fractions. That gives me 3 over 12. Which gives me that our total is 4. Okay, so these in parallel have an equivalent resistance of 4 ohms. So we can simplify the circuit. Okay, We take these two that were in parallel and now they put it together over in this one to the right. So this one is 4 ohms. Okay, Then now we just have 4 resistors in series so we just add it up. 3 plus 6 plus 4 plus 5. So we have 3 for 9. Okay. This is 9, so we have 
our total being 18 ohms. Okay. Say we wanted to find the current in all of these. Okay. I'm going to show you guys how to do the current. So let's go ahead and find I total. Okay. I total is going to be whatever the voltage of the battery is. It wasn't given in this problem, so we're just going to say it's 9 volts. So that's pretty standard. 9 volts divided by 18 ohms. So it's 1 or 1 half. Okay. So we're going to say it's 0 0.5 amps. And that's the bell. i got to go. Okay, so we have 5 amps of current coming out of the battery. So the 5 amps is going to go through the 3 ohm resistor and through the 6 ohm resistor, but then it has to break apart, okay, to flow through these two other resistors, okay. Because they're not equal resistance, the current is not going to break apart evenly, okay. We have 6 ohms here and 12 ohms here. The rule, if you remember, is more current, or I mean, sorry, more resistance less current. Because this one has double the resistance of the 6 ohm resistor, it's only going to get half as much current. So we're going to take our 0.5 amps okay, and see what that works out to. So okay. When you do the math and everything, um, normally you only have to do it with resistors that are equal, but the 0.61 will actually be getting 0.16 of the current. And this one will be getting 0.3. Sorry, I rounded wrong. 0.17 of the current, and this one will be getting 0.33. Okay, this one has to be double this one, and that's how the 5.5 amps gets divided. Okay, and then it goes through here, and it comes back out, and 0.5 amps goes there, and returns to the battery. Okay, we could also look at the voltage drop across each resistor. Okay, an easy way to do that would be, say for the 3 ohm resistor, voltage equals resistance times, I mean, times current. So we have 0.5 amps times 3 ohms, which is 1.5 volts. So we lose 1.5 volts across this resistor. Okay. We lose three volts across the six ohm resistor. So even by the time we get to this resistor, the only voltage we have left is nine. Oh, let's do this resistor too. This one uses 2.5. So these two resistors are gonna get a total of nine minus 1.5, 4.5, 6.5. Two volts. So that two volts gets split among these two resistors. And because they're parallel, they're going to get two volts each. Okay. And when you do up the math, you can also see that this gets one third of volts or 0.66 um, amps. And this one gets two thirds or, um, yeah, something like that. Okay. So that is how combination circuits work. They're a lot more complicated then the series or the parallel circuits. We're not going to be doing too much of them, but it's good exposure to what they are. Okay, thanks.